Hello and welcome to iClone Tutorials, iClone 3D Exchange Overview, getting familiar with the general user interface, features, and conversion abilities. 3D Exchange is a powerful converter that makes it easy for users to convert any 3DS or OBJ file using content created in applications such as 3D Max, ZBrush, SketchUp, Maya, etc. Users can convert and edit their models for import into iClone as props, accessories, or even 3D scenes. 3D Exchange also allows users to load props, accessories, or 3D scene VNS files made with iClone directly into 3D Exchange to modify specific objects position, orientation, size, specularity, shadow settings, and much more. This is wonderful for generating lots of content for custom libraries or content packs for sale. This overview tutorial will introduce users to the key features, interface, tools, panels, and options presented when using the new 3D Exchange. Also showing how to create custom props, props with animation, and custom accessories as well. Step number one, open 3D Exchange and go to File, Open, or use hotkey Control plus zero, and then select car.3ds. Download the model used in this illustration at www.amazing3d.com forward slash free forward slash free dot s html. Step number two, turn on the dummy object to use as a scale reference by clicking the dummy icon. Use the zoom and roll tools by clicking on their icons and to activate from the toolbar and then click and drag inside the 3D viewer until you are able to position the 3D viewer where the dummy reference can be seen completely. Step number three, turn on the full light button to activate the light angles making it easier to view the car. Locate the scene transform panel and then find the scale portion of the panel. Make sure that lock XYZ checkbox is checked to scale the car on all three axes simultaneously. Set the scale value to 250 for this model or any number that will work with the model that you are using to match the scale of the dummy. This will size up the scale model in relation to the scale of the default avatars in iClone. Step number four, select the MR glass node in the scene tree and then locate the bounding box icon. Click to activate and notice in the 3D viewer that the yellow lined box is now surrounding the selected node. Check on modify specularity under the node attribute panel to activate the glossiness and specular fields. Set the specular to 400 to add more shine and the glossiness to 35 for more gloss to create a more realistic look to your car glass once exported into iClone. Step number five, check off all other nodes besides the MMTRIM node, the MRBODY underscore one node, the MRGLASS underscore one node, and then MRLP underscore one node, MRTLL node, and the MRTLR nodes. Then under the node attribute panel, in the normal section, locate the two-sided checkbox, and then check on the two-sided checkbox. You may check off the include box of the MR glass underscore one node to see the difference with two-sided checked on versus off. Step number six, to change the specular and glossiness levels of the car, you will need to select the MR body node and then on the node attribute panel, check the modify specularity box. Set the specular to 800 and then the glossiness you'll need to set to a value of 50. Moving the 3D viewer will now show you the glossiness and specular levels of the car in relation to the light. Step number seven, now just select the glass of the car and export it as a prop. Do this so the opacity of the car glass can be set in iClone to make the glass appear transparent, like glass does in real life. 
Check the included box for MR glass underscore one only, excluding all other nodes, and use hotkey control E for export, and then export as a prop. Make sure the props bullet is selected, and rename the file to car glass to define the new prop. Then go ahead and click OK. This will successfully export your prop into the iClone prop custom folder. Step number eight, now to export the car body separately. The car body and the glass will be reconnected as a merged prop in iClone after the opacity for the glass is updated. To export the car body, check the included boxes for the rest of the nodes except for the MR glass underscore one node. Go ahead and do that now. Then, again, use hotkey control plus E to export the item as a prop. Rename your new prop as Car Body to define the new content. Make sure the Props bullet is selected and go ahead and click OK. Step number nine, open iClone and then go to Scene, Props, Custom Tab and locate your newly exported Car Body and Car Glass. Double click both elements to apply them to the scene. Then use the Roll XZ tool and the zoom tool to position the car in the viewport so the entire car may be observed. You may want to hide your character as well. Step number 10, now click the modify tab and then be sure that you have the car glass prop selected. You can tell which prop is selected by the black bullet point to the left of the active prop. Scroll down and locate the opacity section of the menu and then click launch to open and edit the car glass opacity to create a transparent look. Step number 11, use your external image editor like Photoshop or PaintShop Pro to set the opacity map to a dark gray which will cause the car glass to appear transparent. Opacity maps in iClone work by using a value from black to white to adjust the transparency. Black image maps equal 100% invisible and white image maps equal 100% visible, like the one you see here. Any gray value will cause the object to be semi-transparent. Edit and apply the image for the opacity to your model. Return to iClone and use the Import Opacity button to access and update the new opacity map. After application, you will notice the glass is now transparent. Step number 12, to save your edited car glass, go back to the custom tab and then click on the icon to highlight and then select the overwrite button from the bottom to permanently save the new map to your car. Now we're going to shift focus to animating an object imported from 3D Exchange. Return to 3D Exchange for step number 13. Some models may be good candidates for animation, but when imported into iClone have no animation included. To break apart a 3D file that you would like to animate, follow these steps. Download the model for this illustration at www.amazing3d.com forward slash free forward slash free to dot shtml to get the azc fan zip file and retrieve the azc fan 3ds and load the ceiling fan into 3d exchange for editing and converting. Step 14. Locate the scene transform panel once again and with lock xyz checkbox checked to the on position, set a scale value of 5, decreasing the scale dramatically. Then select the align to center button, and this will move the model to the 0, 0, 0 position. You can then easily click the home button or use the F icon to position the 3D viewer next to the model. Step 15, move the center of the fan blades to the scene root since the fan blades are not necessarily in the center of the fan blades model. To solve this problem, you need to only to move the fan blades to the center to align with the world axis. Activate the world axis by clicking the world axis button from the toolbar and then use the blue or vertical guide to align the center of the fan blades. Turn the dummy object off to have a better view of this. Select the blades node and enter a value of 682 into the forward back field. This will perfectly align our blades. Step number 16, select the 3DS roof from the scene tree and then in the scene transform panel, 
set the up down value to a value of 350. This will move the fan up above the dummy reference in relation to where a ceiling fan would be in scene. Then click the include checkbox unchecking the motor node leaving the blades node checked. Locate the node attribute panel and uncheck cast shadow. So the selected node won't cast a shadow once imported into iClone. Step number 17. Now that the fan blades are the only object included in the scene, use hotkey Control e to export and then export it as a prop, making sure that the props button is bulleted and rename your file to AZ Fan Blades to define the new prop. Then go ahead and click OK. This will successfully export your prop into your iClone prop custom folder. Step number 18. Now turn off the fan blades node and turn on the motor node to export the rest of the model in the scene tree. Uncheck the blades and make sure that the motor node is checked on, then Again, uncheck Cast Shadow with the motor node selected. Step number 19, click Control e once again to export as a prop, then rename your file to AZ Fan Motor to define the new prop, and then again, click OK. This will successfully export your prop into your iClone prop custom folder. Step number 20, once again, open iClone, and then double click on the two new props from your custom menu to add them in scene. Then use the camera view arrow to fly out and choose the top view. Again, use the zoom tool to zoom out where the entire fan can be viewed. You can easily go to the modify panel and remove any other objects in the scene that you don't wish to have there, like our car body and car glass. Step 21, while under the modify tab, make sure that the AZ fan blades are selected then click the timeline button to activate the timeline. Use the add key button at current frame 1 to add a key to the beginning of the project. Step 22. Now animate the fan prop by allowing the rest of the fan that was exported separately to remain still. Enter a value of 50 into the current frame field. Then under the rotate portion of the adjust menu, enter a value of 180 into the last rotation field. This will automatically set a keyframe at frame 50. This will rotate your fan blades halfway around. Step number 23. Enter a value of 100 into the current frame field. And then, under the third rotate field, enter a number value of 1. This will automatically set a keyframe at frame 100. And this will rotate your fan blades the rest of the way around. Minus one point, of course, so the loop is created by the three frames. Step number 24. A very easy way to loop your rotation animation is to click and drag on the timeline, highlighting the original three keyframes. Then after changing to a bright blue indicating that they are active, use hotkeys Control c to copy, and then move to current frame 101, and then use hotkey Control v to paste. Repeat this process for frames 201, 301, and so on, filling the timeline. Step number 25, scroll up and merge the two props using the merge button. Then use the remove button to remove the excess props, leaving only the merge prop in the scene. To place the finished fan into a 3D scene, go to scene, 3D scene, template, and then double click on the room icon. Use the pan and roll XZ tools to position the camera to see the fan in scene. Then use the play pause button to review. Section 3, import, smooth, and change the material settings of a model using 3D Exchange. Step number 26, return to 3D Exchange. 3D Exchange can easily edit the color of the 3DS or OVJ files that have no color or need to be colorized differently according to specific parts of the model. Download the model for this illustration from www.amazing3d.com forward slash free forward slash free two dot s html to get the a 3d grin dot zip file to retrieve the a 3d grin dot 3ds 
and then load the grenade into 3D Exchange for file edit and conversion. Step number 27, select the grenade underscore one node in the scene tree and then locate the auto smooth button under the node attribute panel. Enter a value of 180 into the field and then click auto smooth. This will increase the smoothness of the nodes, making the mesh appear smoother. Step number 28. Changing the specularity of the 3D model will cause the models with a shiny effect to appear appropriately. Plastics, glass, and metals are commonly higher in specular value and need to have specularity added to look better in your iClone scenes. Check on the Modify Specularity checkbox and then set the specular to a value of 10 and set a glossiness value to 50. Turn on your pixel shader by clicking the pixel shader icon or using hotkey control plus F1. Step number 29. Some models need color added to be useful as a prop, accessory, or 3D scene in iClone. 3D Exchange can alter the model color of each node or change the color of the entire model. Edit the color by first checking on the Modify Color checkbox. Next, add color by clicking on the color swatch to the right to activate the color menu. Choose a dark green and then select OK. If you want to edit the color of one singular node, then select the node in the scene tree and repeat the steps just demonstrated to change only the color of a single node. Step number 30. Export or use hotkey Control plus E to export your new grenade as an accessory. Choose the accessory bullet point and then go ahead and click OK. This will successfully export your new accessory to your iClone accessory custom folder. Return to iClone, go to Avatar, Character, Accessories, Custom, and double click to add our new accessory in scene. iClone 3D Exchange is a powerful addition to the Real Illusion real time production pipeline enabling users to seek out custom 3D content for editing in 3DX and use inside of iClone. Exporting content as props, accessories, and 3D scenes allows you to shoot on location, accessorize from a world of options, and populate your scene with almost any model you can think of. With iClone and 3D Exchange, your imagination is the only limit. If you have any further questions, please feel free to visit www.realillusion.com or contact technical support.